Ever wonder what robot arms, video calls, and financial trading have in common? All of them require multiple computers synchronized perfectly to work together. But how do you even synchronize two, three, or maybe even hundreds of devices over a single network? The answer is a little something called Precision Time Protocol, or PTP. But what's actually doing the synchronizing? Today might be your PC, but tomorrow it could be something much, much smaller. Hey everyone, welcome to the lab. My name is Draven, and today I will be demonstrating how microchips Ethernet files enable your devices to synchronize with each other using PTP. Let's get started. So today in front of me, I will be using Microchip's second generation Ethernet development system, or EDS2, platform. This demo is a LAN 9668 EDS2 switch evaluation board, each equipped with two daughter cards, a LAN 8814 quad PHY and a LAN 8840 single port PHY. The LAN 9668 serves as a network switch and contains a single core 800 MHz ARM Cortex A7 microprocessor and a DDR3 slash DDR3L controller supporting up to 2 GB of memory. This means that this switch is running its own flavor of Linux, which enables full management of the switch and advanced software applications. For example, enabling PTP on the switch is as simple as installing the PTP for Linux package like you would any other Linux package and initializing a PTP for Linux instance. This switch is going to serve as our PTP leader switch, and this one is going to serve as our PTP follower switch. But the real stars of the show today are the LAN 8814 quad PHY and the LAN 8840 single port PHY. Both PHYs are on daughter cards connected to the LAN 9668 switch via these sodium connectors right here. While those of you watching this on your laptops might recognize these as the connectors for your RAM sticks, Microchip's EDS2 platform uses these to connect PHYs and other daughter cards to the switch via their MAC interfaces. This allows for a flexible testing platform where Microchip can rapidly develop and test our vast catalog of Ethernet products, as well as allowing you guys to quickly design your own daughter cards that slot into the system. These two FIs are capable of gigabit Ethernet speeds and, like many other FIs and switches, support one pulse per second outputs. So let's probe these ones right now. So one pulse per second, or one PPS as the name implies, is an output signal that pulses once per second. Pretty straightforward, right? Just like what I'm doing today, you can probe these clock signals and compare them to see how well your devices are synchronized together. And this clock signal can even be fed to other devices to synchronize them directly, which can get you synced up in the order of maybe a few microseconds. Well, what if I want precision on the order of, say, a couple of nanoseconds? If you're an auto manufacturer and robots that swing huge car parts around, you definitely want to make sure that they're all synced up, right? That's where Microchip spies come in, because they can do a little trick called hardware-based timestamping. Let's quickly zoom into these two clock signals and see how well they're synced up. As you can see, the follower's clock occasionally jumps around the leader's clock as it compensates for disturbances in the signal, but it never gets delayed past a couple of nanoseconds. So how does it do that? As a bit of background, PTP is enabled when the leader device sends special timestamp packets to the follower device. When the follower device receives these packets, it uses the timestamp in the packet to calculate the timing for sending the next one, ensuring that their messages remain synced up. Normally, this is achieved through the switch or the microprocessor handling this entirely in software. So the delay goes through this leader switch, through one PHY, through the cable, and then through the next PHY, and then to the follower, and then back and forth. But what if the PHYs themselves can handle that? If these guys can do all the timestamping, that saves precious compute cycles on the host side and catches the exact moment in time messages are sent and received at the hardware level, which makes the actual timestamping process much more accurate and much, much faster. This is super important if you're in the industrial or automotive space, especially in applications that operate around humans. If you're a self-driving car and you see a person on the road, having minimum delay between your camera and your brake control is absolutely necessary. So if you need to synchronize computers, sensors, and all sorts of nodes in a network, we hope this demonstration gives you an idea of how Microchip FIs with hardware timestamping can help you. And as always, we here at Microchip are available to help you be successful. You can get these evaluation boards and many others via Microchip Direct. Links to the Ethernet switch and FIs we showed you today can be found in the description below. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again in the lab.